So, Walt, would you like to begin? Um, well, why don't we do it this way? We, uh, we do want to get to the talking about the future, but we have some, there is some controversy that you've just been through. So, let me just start by asking you, um, you have a business that's based on sharing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. people wouldn't go on Facebook unless they wanted to share with, with groups of people. But there is this perception that uh, you're on a course or have been on a course to push people's information into a position where it's pretty much visible across the internet unless they do a bunch of stuff about it. Is that a wrong perception? Have you been wrongly labeled with that or is that something that you didn't communicate right or what is your feeling about that? I mean, there have been misperceptions that say that we're trying to make all the information open or something like that and that's completely false. I mean, there are big buckets of information that we recommend that you share with you know, only your friends privately, all the really sensitive stuff, like your contact information, your address, your phone number, um, who can go and post stuff on your page. That stuff is all set to friends only. Right, but there's a difference between sort of your user interface for your settings, which you have overhauled, and it's always good to be simpler, and yeah. I know that you can still go in and customize them and have the more complex view if you want, and that's all good. But the real issue is whether people trust that you're still on board with the idea that they thought you were on board with when they joined. And I think this is what Kara was yeah. saying, which is it's a place to share with people a limited group of people, not an unlimited group of people, and certainly not the whole internet. And you did this instant personalization thing, you did these uh, uh, community pages, is that what they were called? Yeah. These things just came at members of Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, you go onto Facebook one day and there's an announcement from you guys that, oh, you know what? You know those interests you put on your page three years ago when you joined? Now they're all linked to some pages. And you're like, what? What does that mean? Who's, who has access to those pages? What are those pages? In other words, you've done some abrupt things that, um, yes, there was a way to back out of them mm -hmm. by going to privacy settings, but even if they were simpler privacy settings, you're still putting the onus on me to do some work to maintain the level of privacy I expected at the beginning. So the question that I have is not about whether your privacy settings were complicated or simple or better or worse. But why do I have to do the work to even go to them? Why are you taking preemptive steps that make me go and check and make sure that I have the control I want? That are happening in the world around us. But you but didn't answer my question. My question is, you seem well, to have taken some steps to make more public my information as a Facebook member on your own, by yourself, all of a sudden announcing them. And without, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, what I really have is I have X number of friends here. I'm happy to have them see my photos or mm. my status messages. I'm happy to know when their birthdays are, happy to have them right on my wall. Why is the management of this company saying they're going to take some of my information and do some things with it? The things that they want as well. So do you feel like it's a backlash or that you feel like you're violating people's privacy? When you're, when you're, because some things do, for better or worse, whether you deserve it or not, some of these, you know, you're a public figure, you get a lot of things. Those emails back in college, they stick to you now, whether you like it or not. And they're pro it's probably unfair to, I, I don't want to see texts I wrote when I was 19 years old, or maybe last week even. Um, but, <laughs> truly. Um, how, why does that, do you feel like it sticks to you, or why does it, because, because you happen to run a service that is sharing, how do you explain? the hubbub around it how what do you how do you and it must affect you as a person because yeah you know
Um, you know, it's... I think the issue is you became the head of the biggest social networking company on the planet. Yeah, no, so, but I, so I think the, the interesting thing is that, you know, so I started this when I was, you know, started working on this type of stuff when I was 18, started building this when I was around 19 years old. Um, and along the way, just, you know, we, I just gained, a, uh, I think, you know, a lot of stuff changed as we've gone from building this project in a dorm room to now having a service that almost 500 million right, people exactly. are using um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um... If that. Well... So they want to know who you are and what you actually think. I mean, they should, and you should explain that to them. I mean, in, in some way. Do you, you feel like you're adequately portrayed as a... Because they want to wonder about the person who actually created this thing. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, a lot of stuff happened, happened along the way. I think, um, you know, there were real learning points and turning points along the way in terms of, um, in terms of building things. You know, it really went from this position very early on where we were just in this college dorm room mm -hmm. to we moved out to California. It was a few friends and me. And, um, you know, it, it just kind of had this project feel for a while, and there was this real turning point when, um, when companies started trying to buy the company for a huge amount of money. And, you know, I had to kind of get my friends together, and we had to decide what was it that we really cared about and what was it that we wanted to do. So, uh, before we move off this privacy thing, and I thought that was a fascinating right, okay. answer. Okay, you want to take off the hoodie? Okay, you want to take off the hoodie? You want to take off the hoodie? You know, I never take off. You know, I never take off the hoodie. I know you don't. What's with that? There's a group of women in the audience that wish you would. Well, they want to know who you are and what you actually think. I mean, they should, and you should explain that to them. Uh, no. <laughs> Girls? Whoa. All right. All right. Yeah, that's okay. Um... Can you explain what this instant personalization mm. thing was that you did and why you did it and what was the, what's the value of it to your users? Maybe I should take off the hoodie. Take off the hoodie. Go ahead. Go Maybe I should take off the hoodie. Take off the hoodie. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here. Let me get someone. Uh, you all right? Yeah. This is a great moment in internet history. What? <laughs> you all right? Um, what are we going to do with the mic? Put it on your... All right. Put it on the collar of your T-shirt. Do you want some... You need some help? No. I'm good. All right. Mark? Sorry about the. Sorry about being quiet, Mark. No, it's... We're not even yelling at you. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> we're not going to yell at you. No, we're, of course not. <sighs> that is a warm hoodie. Yeah, no, it's a thick hoodie. We, it's, um, it's a company hoodie. We print yeah. our mission on the inside. What? Oh, oh my really? God, the inside of the hoodie, everybody. Take a ball. <sighs> Take a ball. <sighs> Take a ball. <sighs> what is it? Making the. Making the world more open and connected. Oh, my God. It's like a secret Ooh. vault. Oh my God! It's like a secret cool. vault. <laughs> Look at that! Making the world open and connected, stream graph platform, and this weird symbol in the middle that is probably for the Illuminati. <laughs> oh, 2010. No, it's 2010. Okay. On the so what's the what is instant personalization and why did you do it? What's it? Sure. Name? So I mean, so what we're what we're trying to do is, um, you know, we we're building Facebook in this way that we think is pretty different from most other sites, right? And it's a lot more engaging than than you know almost every other website out there. And we think that the reason for that 
is that it's designed around people. We have a lot more to do, right? And, and I mean, that's like one of, I think, the most exciting things for the next few years is we're nowhere near the set of things that we think should get built. Um, and I think that's one of the exciting things about working at Facebook now. It's one of the exciting things about doing what we're doing. And um, it's just a cool place to be. Great. Mark, thank you. Thank so you, much. Mark. Thanks. Thank you.